Hi, welcome back to our coverage from AWS reInvent 2018. My name's Ian, Ian Massingham. I'm with the AWS Evangelism team here at the show. And as I'm sure you know, we're bringing you live coverage from AWS's user conference here in Las Vegas this week. And for this next segment, we've got something a little bit new for our live coverage, which is a segment called Meet the Engineer. And I'm delighted to be joined by Becky Weiss from our uh, IAM team here at AWS, one of our senior principals. So first of all, Becky, can you introduce yourself a little bit more completely and explain what a senior principal engineer here at <laughs> AWS actually does? I'd love to. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for introducing me, Ian. Um, so as Ian said, my name is Becky Weiss. Um, I am a senior principal engineer here at AWS. Um, I've worked for AWS about uh, about five or five years all told. This is my fourth uh, reinvent. It's an incredible privilege to be here. And um, yeah, so what you know, so what I do in my job, you know, my job is to build these services that. AWS customers that all these tens of thousands of people here at AWS have uh, are running their business critical workloads on. Um, services that I've worked on in the past, my first gig at AWS was um, on a service called VPC, Virtual Private Cloud. Um, virtual Private Cloud, uh, for those of you who don't know, it is the network for your in, for anything you're running in AWS. You know, of course, these are web services. You're reaching them over the web. They uh, you reach them over a network, so you need a network. It it provides you incredibly uh, flexible controls over your network security. So in the years I was working on VPC, I get to talk to a lot of customers, both at reInvent and throughout the year. Get to talk to a lot of customers about their networks. Often they want to talk to you about network security yep. when they talk, want to talk about their VPC. How do and VPC offers all of these tools. You know, making sure that if I have a service, if I have some virtual machines, that they're receiving the traffic that they expect to receive and not receiving the traffic that they don't expect to receive. And you know, you meet with customers who want to give you feedback on what you built and they want to ask you for new features and capabilities that they want to build. Um, and in working with them, what I, I became aware of the fact that, um, that Customers in AWS, you know, they're they're running literally every kind of workload on us, and there's there's a lot of diversity of security needs for of these needs, customers, yeah. right? Um, there's a diversity of needs, and um, what all signs pointed to for me for IAM permissions management, you know, because that's really the other half of securing your workload. They're securing your network and they're securing permissions to the things that you're running Can in you AWS. Can you describe a little bit more about what IAM is? Because a, a lot of our viewers are likely to be kind of new to AWS today. So what is IAM and what kind of role does it play in controlling and configuring AWS services? Yeah, um, IAM, Identity and Access Management, this is actually one of, when you're learning AWS, this is one of the first things you should learn. It's one of the first things you should become familiar with because IAM is what does authentication and authorization in the cloud. In other words, it's how you manage your permissions to anything you do in AWS, and by anything, I really do mean anything. Everything you do in AWS, the W in AWS is for, for the WS in AWS is for web services. Web services means that all of it is done, you know, at the end of the day, anything you do with AWS is done via an API. You know, either you're calling the API directly through our SDK in one of the many languages in which we offer the SDK or our command line interface, or you're interacting with you know the UI on our console, you know, and in, uh, in in your browser, and that too is in turn making API requests on your behalf. Well, if you're making web requests to a service to do things, well, first they need to know who's calling, they need to authenticate the caller, and then they need to authorize. They need to know, all right, user Becky is trying to uh, is trying to modify the security groups on her VPC. Is she allowed to do that or not? And these permission controls, they govern everything you can do in AWS. So I'm talking about I'm talking about creating, deleting, modifying your infrastructure, like modifying, in fact, even your network and your IAM controls. Um, but I'm also talking about access to data, like data you might be keeping in Amazon Simple Storage Service, S3, or in a DynamoDB table, so access to your data, um, access to your encryption keys, because you know security, Security conscious customers are a big part of my world, so um, you know we offer this encryption service, KMS, Key Management Service. Very 
simply and powerfully integrated with many of our data services, good controls over what you can do with that. And even our higher, you know, as you see us move into higher level services in AWS, like our machine learning services and our higher level data services, you'll see that they too are controlled by IAM permission. So it's really the permissions control service that underlies literally anything you do in AWS at any level of our infrastructure. I was uh, working with customers myself. I always describe it as the most, the highest returning investment in yes. t time spent learning about AWS. If you invest that time in IAM, it will pay back over every single service that you use, right? Because every single service depends on IAM to control access and authentication. For customers that are getting started with AWS, how should they get started with things like VPC and IAM? What are some tricks or tips that you would give to a brand new user that is just getting started with AWS in the cloud today? If you're just, you know what? I was in that position a couple of years ago. When I came to AWS in 2013, um, I had actually been using AWS kind of as a hobbyist. You know, I was, I was, I am currently AWS's biggest fan, and I actually have been for way longer than I even ever thought I would get to work here. Um, but, um, Really, the best way to learn these things. There are lots of ways to learn these things. There's, you know, there's white papers you can read. There's videos you can watch. Um, I can even recommend some that, you know, that are going to go up on YouTube from this reinvent. But really, bar none, I find, or maybe this is just the way I learn about things. Build something. Yep. You know, the great thing about AWS, AWS has many benefits that we spend all week here at reInvent touting agility, global reach, in, you know, speed of innovation, uh, cost efficiency, and all of those are true. But one thing that, uh, one benefit of using the cloud that I think is a little bit unsung is its place as a learning tool. Um, the cloud is an incredible, incredibly cheap learning tool. If you think about it, before we had the ability to spin up an EC2 instance and pay literally pennies um, for it, you know, you, there's actually a pretty high barrier to Spend entry. Spend thousands if you just, of wait months right, in most cases. You just yeah, want to run work. a web service. You just want to experiment with the latest framework. You just want to try something. Now, kind of, as sort of like an individual developer um, on your own sort of technical learning journey, um, AWS gives you incredibly cheap tools, just even on your own dime, because it literally might just be a dime. Yep. <laughs> um, on your own dime to learn, you know, you read, I do this all the time in my spare time. I'll read something, you know, I'll read something in Hacker News or a customer will use a technical term with me that I haven't heard. I'll go and look it up and if it looks interesting, I'll try to run it. <laughs> you know, I'll try to run it, I'll kick the tires, I'll poke at it. And I really think if you want to learn a technical concept, really either an AWS technical concept or uh, a, a you know technical concept from out there in the world, um, building is actually a great way to do it. And AWS, in addition to all of the other benefits that AWS offers to enterprises and governments, to the individual uh, to the individual developer, it is an incredible tool for uh, self teaching. Totally um, agree. I totally agree. Uh, so you're working on identity and access management now, having worked on VPC before. What do you consider? the most interesting or maybe some of the most powerful features of IAM for the more advanced users that might be watching the stream? Okay, um, well, one of my favorite things about IAM is that it is, um, well, it's actually not too hard to get a hang of the basic fundamental patterns. Like there's, IAM is mostly a policy language that you know you can you can read a couple of examples and you'll just kind of get the hang of the pattern. And this pattern works across the whole landscape of AWS. But many of our services, and this is increasingly true, offer incredible flexibility and control in these policies. Now the details of the details of this are service by service because with different services you're doing different things and therefore controls. you have different controls. But um, you know, if you follow our documentation into the details of IAM controls for various services, you'll find that some of them actually give you very fine-grained controls. Uh, one of my favorite examples, this is just, it's just sort of a random example, but I'll throw it out there, DynamoDB, our NoSQL, our, our NoSQL database. Um, you know, with DynamoDB, you get item, put item, query, you know, fairly simple API. But if you look at the controls that it gives you in IAM, if you look at the, the if you if you go into sort of the details of what kinds of things you can control, you can write fine-grained controls all the way down to like what the primary key is on your item and like what, what that key starts with. 
and you can use like the name of a user so you can make it whoever is calling you they only get access to certain keys because they can only query on certain keys um, another example that ha where you get incredible sort of almost unexpectedly incredible flexibility and control is um, API gateway this is from our this is from our serverless world yep. you know we offer a set of serverless uh, we offer a set of Server, services that we call serverless. This includes API Gateway, which is what it sounds like, um, Lambda, serverless function, you know, serverless functions in the cloud where you just provide your code. Well, API Gateway lets you take the API, so you get to define a REST API with API Gateway, and you know, AWS will front it with all of the things, you know, rate controls and all these other things, that, undifferentiated heavy lifting. But it will also, if you want to use this feature of it, it will also do authentication and authorization for you on your own resources. So you can create your own IAM protected resources and use That's IAM right. policies for your own custom stuff, right? That's right. Yeah. And they can they can they can call API Gateway authenticated as an AWS, as an AWS caller, or even as as a Cognito identity. Cognito is our Cognito is our identity service and it offers user pools. So you can have Cognito managing your users' usernames and passwords. You can and API Gateway will natively understand that author will natively understand that as your customers authenticate to your APIs. So the 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 set of what you can build is pretty incredible. Um, but at the bottom of all of it, it's all based on the same patterns that repeat over and over again. So if you get good at writing IAM policy for one thing, you're going to be able to use those skills on another AWS service. And even as, on your own services. Even on your own services. And as you adopt more AWS services and try more out, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same tools. Uh, it's exactly the same tools for securing these things as it is for, and even future services that we will have. Um, even these future services, they'll be the same tools for securing this. Great. So wrap it up there. Thanks very much for Thank joining me, so Becky. Much, Enjoy Ian. the rest of the it was show. A pleasure talking to you. And uh, thanks for joining us here on Twitch.tv/slash AWS. We'll see you soon. See bye bye. You soon.